Hello, and good morning, afternoon, or evening. Um, I have a special video here. The New Dinosaurs Realistic Edition by me. And if you don't know what the New Dinosaurs are, it's, um, it's a book made by the paleobiologist Dougal Dixon, and what dinosaurs look like in, from... 66 million years ago to now so jump ahead 66 million years um it does have some flaws it was made in the 90s the late 90s so it does have some flaws so that's why i'm updating it also make sure to like and subscribe and if you don't already know like is clicking the like button and then subscribe is clicking the subscribe and if it gives you the option, click the little bell icon and click all to get all of my future notifications. Because no one is doing this. No one else. And I made it dark mode friendly, so thank me for that. <laughs> Pull up. Alright, the Cribrum or Cribrosaurus. Um, Cribrosaurus. Um, looks like this. It's like a flamingo, but it's a dinosaur. And I just added some feathers. These are not teeth. These are little baleen things. And it is a dinosaur. It is a Silosaurian dinosaur. So it does have a pretty sizable amount of feathers. And that's what makes it pink from the diet, just like a flamingo. Next, I have the, Hunu the Hanuhan or the Grimposaur Grimposaurus. Um, I made this just more updated to what we know Hypsilophodons look like now. Um, I still had the upwards tail, but not like as extreme as this thing. I just have it like this. I have them semi bipedal. Some feathers like that. Some on the head, some bordering, and some feathers on the head and the back. As we know, Heterodontosaur, as a close relative, did have those. Next is the plunger, or the pinola. The plunger is basically almost the same thing. It has rounded wingtips, so I did change that. And it has a little bit of pycnophybridge, unlike this penguin, penguin-y thing. And it uses its back legs as a... Um, rudder to go around the water like a penguin. Next is the extremely famous cutlass tooth or Cadiosaurus. Um, the cutlass tooth I just made more updated to what um, we know uh, Silosaurian dinosaurs look like now. I gave it some feathers and like a Batman mask almost. And then I made the teeth not so that they can close their mouths instead of permanently open. And I still had that kind of like a back feather ridge right here. But I added some more feathers along this and some head feathers and some arm feathers. Next is the Gourmand or the Ganiosaurus. Um, so I normally draw T-Rexes and Tarbosaurus and Allioramus with these little stripes. That's how you know what which one is which. So I just added um, those stripes to Ganiosaurus. And I just added feathers because in the 90s we didn't know that T-Rex had feathers because we haven't discovered Utyrannus yet. And little feathers on the tail and some feathers on the back and some on the side. And I didn't give it arms, because the description clearly says that it does not have arms. It has no arms. It doesn't need any arms. It just has. It just eats stuff. It's a scavenger. Next is the Sprintosaur, or S. quadribilis. Um, this is a species of, uh, a genus of Sprintosaur in the family Sprintosauridae. Um, it is a hadrosaur relative with a large crest. Um, I thought the, I, cause this is a male, these are males. Um, I thought that the females would want, like, something 
more than this bland horn or just some feathers on the head. I gave it some feathers on the head and some spots on the horn with some neck featherage and a uh, throat thingy, a skin, skin flap. And that's pretty much it for the Sprintosaur. Next is the Wasp Eater, or Vespafegia. Um, I just made this more updated to what we know Silosaurans like look like now, like the Cutlass Tooth or the uh, the Cribrum. I just added some feathers, um, a tongue. I like the tongue. A, a prehensile tail, and just feathers all around. It looks more like an anteater than a, I don't know, what's that name? What's the thing that lived in Triassic? Just cr do something in the comments. Type in the comments what that thing is that lived in Triassic. It's like an anteater. <laughs> Alright, next is the clune or the pa the Perdolius. This is um like a moa. This is like a pterosaur moa. So I just added the pterosaur arms, and I had some feathers, and I had no teeth. Pterosaurs didn't have teeth, but in the skull, it has teeth. That's a big old no-no. I gave it a toothless beak, but it was more strong, and I gave it bigger legs. Next is the North Claw, or the Monicus. Um, this is actually the second place winner in another five scariest animals in speculative zoology. Eye in the corner. I actually forgot my pointer again. So I just add some feathers, um, more feathers along the tail. I still added the stripes like a tiger and some things on the leg. I probably don't need this. This is the second to last one. <laughs> And then I just add, added some teeth. Maybe the North Claw would like gnaw at its prey, bite at its prey, and it would rip off the flesh because it hunted it hunted Sprintosaurs, and it was real fast. It had to go zoom to catch up to the Sprintosaurs, and it used its claw to impale its prey. If you haven't already seen, yeah, I click the eye in the corner for the another five scariest animals in speculative to zoology. All right, the last one on our list is the bird snatcher or the raparosaurus. Um, this elasmosaurus like animal just snatches bird birds out of the sky, but they couldn't do this. This couldn't this couldn't happen. Otherwise, its neck would probably break in half. Instead, I made it so that it had a really long neck, like a really long neck. And a really long jaw with lots of teeth to catch the birds or the pterosaurs. That's pretty much it for the bird snatcher. And that will be it for today. Um, so yeah, see you in the next video.